I wrote out a longer version of this, but realized that by telling the full story, many people would click away. There's far more to this story that I'd be happy to share at a later time, but I'll give you the condensed one for now, with the middle of my story cut out for the sake of time. I just got out of the theaters after having watched The Joker, and after only 10 minutes in, I saw it. After that, I sat there, sat there the entire movie thinking, holy shit, that's me. That's me. I could have been the Joker, but I'm not. So why am I so happy and positive all of a sudden? I know I don't sound it right now, but I am. Well, you can thank one man for that. Okay, it wasn't just him, but he did play a massive role in helping restore my mental health. He also wants to put mental or a psychologist in the White House. His name is Andrew Yang, and he's running for president in 2020. But before I tell you how I joined the Yang gang and began to fly the banner of humanity first, let me share a little of my own origin story. I grew up privileged, far from the life Joker had. I'll admit, if you try to look too hard in my life and draw comparisons to Joker, you'd say this guy, this college educated guy who grew up in a stable two parent household in an upper middle class neighborhood as a white passing male, honestly had anything in common with the Joker who was raised in an abusive household by a mother who was struggling to make ends meet? And I'd say yes. But that part of my life might have been part of why I'm recording this video today, calling for kindness and compassion towards even the most despicable individuals, rather than standing here calling for violence and destruction. Yes, I grew up with a lot of privilege, but I've also been suicidal since the seventh grade. Then I'm going to skip over my entire origin story here to the conclusion, since some of it's covered there anyways. And that's where Andrew Yang came in. And I know I'm not the only one. There are thousands of people chanting his name, acting with almost delusional confidence that this man will win because he's the only one addressing the real problems going on in America. And he's the only one looking for solutions that will literally help every single American, including those who are not working, like stay-at-home mothers. While I love Bernie and his noble fight for the working class, his plans leave little room for me to get excited. His plans rely far too heavily on the federal government, the same one that left me abandoned overseas, thousands of dollars in debt, wanting to kill myself and end it all. The government corruption that was normalized by my parents or my so-called friends led me to think there really was nothing left in the world for me. I do have loving parents and a loving wife, but they don't always understand me due to their more traditional American middle-class life path, which left me feeling hopeless, as if I couldn't continue on. I also had numerous parents of my students, parents and students, who stood up for me when my principal threatened to sue me for allowing video recording for academic purposes. This was despite the fact that parents had been notified, the fact that the principal saw students recording all year, and the fact that she had been publicly posting photos of these students on Facebook for the entire world to see, for the entire year. This was, of course, for completely non-academic purposes, which apparently take a priority in the field of education. The parents who attended my covert farewell party cover due to covert due to their fear of retaliation themselves stood with me but had to ultimately do so silently it's not like they had a universal basic income to keep them going if they were wrongfully terminated from their federal job there were many that stood with me and gave me a support system that joker didn't have but even with these support systems, I was gaslighted so bad by the administration and other teachers who refused to rock the system that I started to doubt myself thinking that I was the one who was wrong. I reached out to EEO, OSC, the IG, the BSG commander, the SACUR, my congressman, and the senators, the Stars and Stripes, the Washington Post, and the New York Times. Not one of them believed me or would share my story. Suddenly, my past anger against Trump started to lead me to actually think I should join him instead since he hates NATO just as much as I do and wants to see it dismantled, I started to justify his corruption because his corruption would help me ultimately destroy the lives of those who had wronged me. I also began thinking of buying a gun to protect myself for the first time in my life because my trauma I experienced with NATO and the US government had me realizing that nothing is black and white. And with as bad as some of the people NATO is fighting are, NATO is awful too. And it's ridiculous that they can claim the moral high ground when they literally left me and other teachers homeless because we refused to stay quiet when we saw the literal disintegration of the U.S. public education system occurring right before our eyes. 
But guess who didn't call BS on my story? Guess who supported me the entire time? That's right, the fucking Yang Gang. They were the ones who listened to my story, shared words of kindness, and lifted me up. They were the ones who I saw took other disaffected voters from both the left and the right and lifted them up to become huge champions for change themselves. That's why I'm so damn confident that Yang will win, and I think that's why in a matter of months, you'll be chanting his name too. Humanity first, y'all. If you don't want another joker, embrace it and embrace John Yang. I mean, Andrew Yang.